You wouldn't want to say, you need to calm down because that's one of those you statements that yeah. just causes the argument. But it could yeah. be something like, I, I feel that maybe if we just took a break yeah. and, and we come back, Maybe we, we pray about it and then we come back together. Bring the temperature down. And, and, yeah, bring yeah. the temperature down. I think yeah. that's what Mike was talking about. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily saying, you calm down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we are back in the kitchen with our kitchen couples in yeah. their kitchens. And we always love hearing from Dr. Mike on the beach. He always has such practical stuff to talk mm. about. And today is no exception. It's all about criticism. Yeah, which is a big one in marriage it because it's so yeah. easy in the heat of the moment to blurt out something or, or to, to attack and then you're in de attack and defensive mode and, that, and then there's the, the fight and flight stuff that Dr. Yeah. Mike was talking about. Uh, but I remember Dr. John Gottman, who is probably the world's foremost researcher on marriage, uh, he said there's something called the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which means if, if you see any of these exhibited regularly in your marriage, the end might be near. Ooh, not necessarily near, but it could be near. So you got to take so note. But his number one on that list was criticism. So it's Ooh. important to deal with this big time. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I thought that segment was okay. I thought it, would, it could have been better if maybe there was little, the beach was a little sunnier or maybe if there was a sandcastle in the back or something. Oh, so, oh sorry. I'm being critical. Oh, sorry. I'm just joking. <laughs> Just joking. Or if we were there. <laughs> it's so important not to be critical. You know what? Um, that, that reminded me of kind of a teaching we've done a little bit in the past uh, on uh, the idea of being codependent. And, and honestly, before A Better Us, I didn't know what that meant. But I've learned from through A Better Us what codependency is and that idea that we can, we can catch something, that we can be infected, if you will. Interesting in this day and age when we're talking about catching things from each other, how you can catch emotions, you can catch a bad day, you can kind of, uh, if you're not careful, let what maybe is going on that might be negative inside your spouse kind of infect you and, and, and they say something and then, well, well, yeah, well, you're, th and then we're throwing bombs back and forth. And, and it's an interesting dichotomy in a marriage where the two are one and yet at the same time there needs to be this like firewall if you will that kind of doesn't let if something for me to be able to realize okay she's having a bad day or 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 something and 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 not just kind of stoop to that level and let it become just this criticism thing so just that sense to realize that I don't know, could be something could have gone wrong in her life. Hurt people hurt people. And and rather than just, you know, start engaging in that, to have that little bit of separation. That's what jumped out at me and and I've been learning that as by being a part of a better us, which is I'm thankful for. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so now that he said all that, I'm going to admit on national television, I'm the critical one out of out of the two of us. Ooh. There I said it. <laughs> I'm saving this episode. <laughs> For future use, right. Well, but something happened recently when I was being critical to him and criticizing him. Um, he pointed something out back at me and, you know, I got thinking about it and I was like, you know what, he's right. And there were some really things that I episode. was doing and um, things that I was thinking that were contributing to the problem. And um, so when I adjusted my behavior and my attitude, things started gelling and I wasn't so seeing, you know, so much of what he was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And so I would say this to couples, allow your spouse to speak truth to you because that's what marriage is all about is iron sharpening iron, which hurts, of course, but ultimately it's making us sharper and better. Um, so we need to be willing uh, to swallow our pride and allow um, this guy or this girl um, to speak truth into you because it will make you better. Mm -hmm. And guys, know this, how, how, how well they take it? is in, in great part due to how we respond. It is how we respond to, because often criticism, boom, we want a counterpoint, right? Instead of counterpointing, right? How about let's just, ah, usa, take it in. And, and then the way we respond to them, sometimes we can respond in a way, not trying to counterpoint and say, well, you did. It says, well, you know what? There may be some truth to that, hun, and, and um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I probably need to get better. Or, hey, you know, um, that, uh, that, that, that really hurt me. And, and so sometimes we're honest and, and raw in that way. But, but how we respond, our respond ability, I think really is the key to the maturity of our relationship and our happiness. Yeah, and uh, Matthew 7 talks about judge not, uh, that you not be judged. And it talks about 
the plank, how you see the plank in someone's eye and not see the plank in your own eye. And so uh, for me, like Danielle was talking about, I can be the critical one and I can be the, you know, throw the criticism without seeing my own criticism. And I always have to catch myself because it's easy to see someone else's fault and not see your own fault. So it's, it's um, very, um, it's important that we pay attention to those things as a, a couple so that we can build each other up and not tear each other down. Yeah, there was, a, there was a technique that Dr. Mike on a beach mentioned that I don't think actually works in our situation because he said, you know, hold your ground and, and uh, tell them to calm down and that you're not going to talk, you're not going to have that conversation until they're at a certain level. But like, I don't think, like in the history of calming down, being told to calm down, I don't think that's ever worked to actually calm someone down. Like if, if Karen and I were in a discussion and uh, I was just like, you need to calm down or else we're not having this conversation. Like, I don't think it's going to work in our, and maybe that's, maybe that's like a young marriage versus, you know, more mature. And, and know each other for years and years, uh, and you just you know how to talk to that person and how to be to, to respond and everything. But yeah, I, I'm not sure if that would work in our situation. Well, I think I think like you were saying, it's good to have boundaries, like Dr. Mike was saying, boundaries in marriage. But it's the way you present those boundaries. Yeah. You don't you like like you know Dan was saying the codependency thing. You don't want all the bad moods he's having to affect me. Like there's a boundary there where I can let him have his bad mood, but it's not going to bring me down too. And but it's and, the way you present and it. You wouldn't want to say you need to calm down because that's one of those you statements that yeah. just causes the argument. But it yeah. could be something like I I feel that maybe if we just took a break yeah. and and we come back. Maybe we, we pray about it and then we come back together. Bring the temperature down. And, and, yeah, bring yeah. the temperature down. I think yeah. that's what Mike was talking about. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily saying, you calm down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is tempting to do. Yeah. It's very tempting to do, <laughs> but not helpful, and like you're saying here. The most important here. thing is, is if we can put it on us instead of you calm down, right? Is like, wow, you know, we get into these discussions and I think sometimes, even if they're the one who is more out of control, I think sometimes in these conversations, I lose control and how much I love you isn't properly represented. And instead of, instead, of, instead of putting it on them to say, you calm down or you do, take it upon yourself right? To be the first one to apologize, to be the first one uh, to, um, to show graciousness, I think. Okay, that's good stuff. Good stuff. All right, and uh, we're going to need to move along, and I, I'm going to have to calm down and not get too excited because we need to move along. Anyway, uh, stay with us because there is more A Better Us to Come. All right.